Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is specifically for those of you who commented on my review of the Gazelle T4 tent and asked for me to show my trip to Montana. There is not going to be a whole lot of action in this video. Just going to show you guys some beautiful scenery, uh, a few video clips, a few pictures that I took on our trip to Montana. We went this past August and it was my wife and I, uh, my youngest brother, and one of his friends. We started our trip in Tennessee, picked my brother and his friend up in Iowa, and spent our first night in the Fort Pierre National Grasslands in South Dakota. Uh, we got there in the middle of the night and set up that gazelle tent for the first time uh, in the pouring down rain in the middle of the night. And we didn't really know what we were doing. I hadn't put on the rain fly before, but anyway, here's a picture of the next morning and you can see that it was beautiful out that day. Unfortunately, I didn't really get any video clips while we were there. I really didn't start uh, shooting video until we actually got to Montana. So you guys sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery and thanks for watching. We have made it to Montana. We are pretty close to Bozeman. Probably stopping here for longer than we intended because the Jeep is uh, not cooperating. We may have to take it to the shop and hopefully they can get it repaired kind of quickly. But uh, we've made it here, set up on the not too far from Goose Creek Trail in the Custer Gallatin National Forest. Now, unfortunately, a lot of that footage from our first night was lost by a corrupted video file. Uh, the second night, we stayed here, and I don't have much video from it either. Pretty little spot, a little closer to road than I would like, and managed to get a couple of pine squirrels around our campground there. The next night, uh, we finally found a spot that we really liked, uh, down by a stream, tucked down in a valley off of the road, and we ended up staying here for a couple of nights. This was a beautiful spot. We parked the vehicles kind of up off of the roadway. We were able to spread out. We did not see a single other car come by in the couple of days that uh, we were here. All throughout the trip, we tried to find uh, clean running water and filtered it using our Sawyer Minis. Now, I did use the bags that came with the Sawyer Minis on this trip, and they worked, but they were kind of a pain to fill. You had to find just the right spot uh, where you could get the bag underwater. I guess some of the bigger uh, water bottles work really well and attach to this and are easier to fill and to squeeze through but uh, we used the bags and they work just fine. The benefit to the bags is they do pack up really nice and small. This is about the size of a normal burger. But, uh, we always make small. Down at this campsite, uh, the boys decided they were going to build a shelter between these two fallen trees, and uh, yeah, here it is. Of 
rough. Yeah. Well, come on, yeah. I bet you this one worked. <laughs> so today we are leaving camp for a little while. We left set up in the same area. And we are heading over towards Robinson Mountain. I'm gonna try to do some climbing up the trail there. I believe I gotta turn right again, correct? Anyway. I'm trying to use the uh, National Forest Service app to navigate and it's not, it's, it's good for moving around. You can save it really well. It's got all the roads marked that are closed but it doesn't let you drop a waypoint so you can keep track of where you're going to. It doesn't let you put in routes, nothing like that. Uh, Onyx is getting there. It's a little better. We've got the Onyx Backcountry app, but, and you can drop points. Oh, there's deer all over the place. Uh, you can drop points, but it doesn't let you lay in routes. Now, I don't know if maybe at the Onyx off-road app, maybe that would work, but I didn't want to pay for you know, like 30 bucks for a year in the state of Montana. So anyway, we're heading over to Robinson Mountain. Uh, it'll probably take us maybe the better part of an hour to get there, we'll figure it out. But I'm gonna try to hike up to that summit and get some, get some good views there. So anyway, that's the plan for today. We will catch you back over there on the mountain. Pretty birds. Three, three adults standing right here. You can get them to move out of the road. There they go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm gonna have to identify that for sure when we get somewhere with data. Uh huh. You can see it real good on the camera. So this is the start of the Robinson Mountain Trail. We just got back, made it about halfway up. Definitely want to try it again at some point, but it's not going to happen on this trip, probably. Uh, we just didn't have enough water with us. That was what, what it came down to. Yo, 
Yep, we made it about halfway up the Robinson Mountain Trail and realized that with the level of fitness that we are all in and, and the injuries. I would be okay. I'm just fine. Oh, yeah, I know. You'd be fine. We got one among us. Well, Morgan doesn't have injuries. Yeah, I'm mostly okay. Two of us that have some pretty bad injuries. Uh, I just and, need water. Yeah. And we're running out of water because we didn't plan enough. I think that's the main thing. Next time we come to this park, because I'm sure we will again at some point, may remember to pack a knee brace. You would like never get this. I've already popped knee. it out once. Yeah, <laughs> but this trail's been worth it so far. Well, that's for sure. It is gorgeous. As we were driving down the mountainside here to the edge of the lake, there was this fawn running along the side, and unfortunately, we uh, turned the camera too quick as he tried to run up the cliff, uh, <laughs> but uh, didn't have such good luck with that. We spent quite a bit of time down here, right here around this bridge and by the lake. My brother and his friend had brought along their longboards and asked me to do a little cinematic shooting of them, so I'll throw this in here just for you guys to see. We spent quite a bit of time just driving around on the National Forest Service roads. A lot of fun uh, driving some gravel roads, some really nicely paved roads, some uh, really quite narrow roads. This was the only car we encountered on the roads our entire time in the Kootenai National Forest. And of course, we had to hit all the puddles.
So my brother wanted to find a place closer to the water to camp tonight. And they're setting up hammocks actually down by the water. But we found this nice little ledge right up here that does require us to uh, use the smaller tent because it's a small area. Let me hike up there and show you. Yeah, so here we are set up on this ledge. And here is the view we'll have when we wake up in the morning. Pretty spectacular. We're sauteing that mushroom we found the other day. That is the chicken of the woods in the pan uh, with some garlic and onions. And I just had a little piece and it tastes amazing. Like chicken, dude. It does taste like chicken. And this might be the back best backdrop for cooking supper ever. Super hazy. It is super hazy. It got really hazy. Yeah, it's because of the fires. Because of fires, dude. Yeah, that's the fire. Mike, dude, that's Mike. He's freaking old people. And with the, with the mushrooms, we're doing uh, the uh, pine squirrels we got the other day. Hopefully, in the morning when it's cool, they'll be running around all up on that pine flat between the couple roads up here, and we'll be able to get a few. <laughs> On our last night in Montana, we stayed at this campground along the Yellowstone River. This was the only time we paid for a spot at a campground, just because there was no national forest land around the area we were driving through and it was a beautiful spot. Did a little bit of fishing, didn't catch anything, but this was a perfect way to spend our last night in Montana. The next morning we woke up early, hit the road, and headed back to South Dakota, where of course we had to stop at Mount Rushmore. We find ourselves once again setting up in Fort Pierre National Grassland in the dark. You can hear the wind is whipping around me. Uh, you might be able to see how oh, there we got the Gazelle T4 tent set up. It has been doing amazing for us this week. And there you can see the uh, last little bits of the sunset hanging on the horizon back there. It is pretty flat out here. We're sharing our campground with cattle tonight. Uh, had to throw away a couple cow pies in order to uh, make space for a hunt. But we're pulled in here just off the road and it's getting windy. We got the moon to light the last of our evening before we call it quits for tonight. And we tent to get into. And this is our last night camping. Stopping at my parents tomorrow night. And then back home on the next. Ten days in a tent, and we all agreed, it wasn't nearly enough. We will all be longing for the next time we can come back to this beautiful state.
Thanks for watching.